Hey everybody, welcome back. OCD Hi-Fi Guy, Mikey here. What's happening? Um, oh, I have been out of pocket. Sorry guys, I've been burnt out watching this COVID bullshit and uh, you know all the crap that's on TV. You know, and it's it's really it's really wild. Uh, oh, it's just I I don't even know. It's surreal, man. I mean, I feel like I'm in some sort of weird dream thing. But um, anyway, so. What we got going here, we're back on, well, John O's with me, Big John, say hi, look, he's even got a, he's got a COVID beard going on there. Oh, you're beautiful there. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, what we've got, we're going back to the, we're going to go back to uh, my main rig, okay? So this is my, my standard reference rig is these speakers here, these are analysis from Greece, and uh, they're um, planar magnetic panels, they're 200 pounds each and 7 foot tall, and uh, you can see how thin they are, they're, you know... It's a, about two and a half, two and a quarter inches. Um, and they are planar magnetic. I'm um, using neodymium uh, magnets. Very, very killer sounding speakers. You'll see. Um, what we're doing now is just we're playing around. So we're going back to a passive. There's a passive crossover that goes on the back of these things. We um, I reconstructed them because the ones that came with it were, it's weird. They were the wrong values and someone had been monkeying around in there. So um, then we've got foil. Uh, Cables going back over here. We're teaming them up on one side of the Roland. We're only using one channel here, and we're doubling them up. So the Roland is seeing, you know, two amps, two two uh, two ohm, and, and one channel only. Um, and I wonder how hot it is. <coughs> Barely. It will be if we keep it keep it up. Okay, so we're listening to the Roland amps. We got two six twenty five S twos. Listen on one side of each, and then this is the AGD uh, preamp here. Um, it's a uh, the um, oh, Andante. Um, anyways, that thing's killer. It's got everything on it. It's got a streamer. It's wireless. It's wired. It's um, got a DAC. It has a phono pre. It's pretty much um, complete. And, um, and, and it really sounds great. I mean, that preamp on this thing is no joke. I mean, it was as good as any of my, my other NAT pieces that I sold this weekend, which really is a bummer because now I miss them. But I'll get some others. Um, okay, so we're listening to, uh, and we got, uh, the, the rolling amps, um, no subwoofers at all. We're just going straight to those panels. These are not in the picture at all. So I'm going to just play something a little, just to, to hear, we, 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 um, assembled this slope, um, according to what the manufacturer told uh, me, which was 650 Hertz and basically, um, a, a first order slope, which is very gradual. Um, and, um, I think too much. So we're going to put in a 12, uh, I played with this before, so I know which filter I like the best. We're going to go from a first order um, at 650, we're going to go to a second order Bessel. Instead of the first orders, well, what, Butterworth, isn't that, you know, first, mm -hmm. and yeah, then, so we'll go to a second order, um, second order uh, Bessel at, uh, um, it's probably 650 as well, maybe six to 680. But anyways, uh, so let's listen to how it sounds. Again, we're going straight up AGD uh, uh, preamplifier, and then from there out to each uh, one channel of each of each of the uh, Roland amps, the 625S2, and then over to the panels. So, um, oh man, and I can't play, I want to play that London Grammar thing, but it gets flagged. Okay, so we'll try our, whatever, our Tony Braxton again. <laughs> So what you can't hear, I don't know if you can hear this or not, but it's just a massive um, soundstage. So we're here, we got there and then there. And you just hear a whole wall, it's just, it's just like you're there. This whole, everything is full of, of sound. sound. We're really demanding. On, we're being very demanding on the on the Roland amps right now. We're, we're almost full power on the on the preamp. So I can just I can just tell I can just tell it's um that I'm that I'm flogging her. 
you know, it's hard. You can just, you, you got a sense of it. When you know your rig, you know when she's working hard, and, and I can tell she is. It's not, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel effortless and, and uh, to me. It's, um, it's clear. And that's just because of the way that the preamp is. I, I, I'm, I'm not able to run dual XLR out, in which case I could use two channels. So I've got to team them up on one channel, which would melt most amps, you know? Um, and they're pushing these one channel is pushing these um because it's it's in this is the speakers in bi amp configuration and we're just using one channel of the amp so so she's not gonna like me if i keep keep that up um but anyways okay so that gives you a channel let's see I, I, there's a couple others that i know we'll, we won't get in trouble for let's see this one little bg's action Sure. Oh, look at those down there. This, I've, been I've been working hard on these. Got a 10 piece order of those things, damn it. I shouldn't complain. No, it's really actually great, but a lot of work. cool man when you play this shit loud it's like being right there
pretty wild. Dream sequence. Okay. Anyway, so that's a, that's a kind of a that's a good enough example of uh, of what's going on. Uh, and so um, we're gonna just we want to play with the uh, passive crossovers. We're gonna play with them and just. See if we can get them to where they where the speakers sound good. It's so weird that a speaker like this, it's a thirty thousand dollars speaker, you know, retail price, that it would come. There's, I, I, I find it hard to believe that those are the actual crossovers that these exact ones came with because they're totally off, you know. And it's it's just strange somehow. Strange sometimes that you'll really you'll encounter some some gear speakers especially are notorious for it. And they'll just be so far out of whack. And you're like, are you kidding me? Like, really? That's what they thought was good? Did they measure? Clearly not. You know, they definitely did it by ear. And they probably had an ear infection. Um, so anyways, um, we're going to fix it. And um, I'll be back. We will be back. See okay, you. I am back. And it has been nearly 24 hours. We were, Jono and I were up uh, almost all night. Uh, redoing the crossovers. Um, they're set now at a 12 dB per octave uh, a Bessel filter. And at 680 is where we put them. And again, it's for the uh, um, right here analysis. And they're, they are two way speakers, okay? And they are set, uh, you know, it's just a two way. That, that uh, ribbon tweeter goes very, very low. So it goes down to, you know, 680. In this case, and uh, and then the, we've got the this is this is both woofer and subwoofer. I mean, this goes down to who knows low, really low. We don't need to add any subs. So these ne these subs, neither of those are on. Um, neither of these uh, four the standards with are Ethernet. On. So this is the streamer. This is the DAC, and it's the uh, preamp. Everything we're bypassing one, two, three pieces, and we're it's all right here. Then we go from there out to the Rollins. The Rollins are still, these are 625 S2s. Each one of those is still using one side where we've doubled up the foils uh, or the speaker cables, meaning these have been on at two ohm for almost 24 hours. Um, and they're they're doing fine, they're not too hot. Um, we, I just had them in here on low volume to help break in the crossovers uh, overnight and all day. And so now it's, um, it's the evening time. Something that um, I want to change. Uh, it seems like a little bit rolled off on the on the, on the top on the highs. Um, you know, when the amps have been on a long time, they get nice and creamy and smooth. Um, things happen to do to do that. Also, um, I'm not sure. I know that we did uh, on when we uh, soldered in the capacitor parts for the tweeter. Um, we didn't use. I've, I've got other higher um, grade caps we just used some offhand just to see how the slope sounded and then i could change them later so i may add in some dooland uh, silver uh in there just to bring things up a tad bit and, and, and accentuate that high a touch um i think that's definitely something that we need to do let me consider what the other things are and see um i'm gonna see which cables went on the tweeter because i've got two different alloys here and i want to use the one Oh yeah, it is okay. Um, oh yeah, that's the other thing. Is there's, yeah, okay. So I know some other places that I can tweak to get, to bring the uh, to bring that top end back a little bit. Um, and I want to I want to recover some of that. And uh, there are some P 
pure copper cable jumpers from the crossover to the actual panel that I could make pure silver. And then I could, um, I can also put that, uh, puts uh, uh, in the cap in the, in that tweeter circuit, um, uh, a, a high grade cap that will, that'll bring back some detail. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come right back. Hang on. Okay. Now here I am the back of the rig. Well, actually, in the back of the speaker, the left, uh, the right channel, um, I thought I would uh, just include this because uh, normally when I say I'll be right back, hold on, you know, I can do stuff that takes an hour, two hour, three hours. You guys have no idea the work that goes into this, some of this. So instead of, I might as well take you along so you can see how to do things or how I'm doing things. First, I get like a doggy. No, that doesn't work. Um, anyways, so... Um, if you can see over here, these are the first things I'm going to pull out. These are the, uh, whatever you call them, you know, the lead outs from the crossover to the main panel. These are, um, what are they? Vampire. So it's like just pure, you know, copper jumpers. Um, no big deal. I'm going to change these out. And what we'll do before I put my caps in, we're just going to do the foils only so we can see how much of a difference that makes and then we will change from there so I'm gonna put the two inch wide coppers on the base because a lot of energy travels through the base so we've got our arrows right okay so we go like this love the tweeter. now there we got arrows good thing see I put arrows right there we've traded those foils for these jumpers so let's see if that brings detail back. Let me go to the other side. I got to do this on the other side and then we'll play some music and see what happens. Hold on. Okay. So here we are um, again on the outside speaker. So now all I've done is to change the, the um, jumpers out of the crossover to the panel and see if it made a difference. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it did. Again, whenever I do this, I do it the first time I'm listening is with you guys. So there's no you know, so there's no, I'm not playing any little trickery because I can edit. I'm actually going to experience it. If it sounds horrible, then uh, we all hear it together. So let's listen. Let's see if it, if it got a little more, if we got some top end. That's what I'm looking for is some retrieval of those very high frequencies. Let's see if we get it. Okay, so remember, <clears throat> we're playing with the passives right now. Okay, so I could optimize this in two seconds using active crossover, um, but I want to challenge myself a little bit by doing it passive. And also just to make a way whereby I can run these with a stereo amp. So if I ever get some amp that I really want to put to the test, let's say it's a big beefy, we could use Jeff Rowland's amp, you know, and use one of these stereo amps to power both channels. Like right now I could, that would be, we'd be really flogging it. We'd be putting <laughs> two, two, both channels at two ohms and asking it to power both speakers instead of one. And, and I'm, I've got no doubt it could. Um, it's just the speaker cables won't reach right now. I know how long everything is. They'd have to to, to meet at the middle. So, um, but but we'll, we'll we'll we don't need to do that right now. Um, but I did hear some retrieval of the high, the really high refined, you know, top end. Um, I'm not sure if you heard that. Let's listen to something else that I played before. Let's see. Okay, so I can already tell it's not I need I want more um, I hear too much bloom in the mid in the upper mid and um, and through the body it's too much bloom so it's not it's not it's like a stuffy nose it's not it's not clear it needs to be a little more clear um, I need to that 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 low needs to back off a bit and we're again we're trying to do this passive so it makes it very challenging what I need to do is pad really 
the um that's one way of doing it is to pad that that main uh panel and 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 so that the tweeter can can come through a little cleaner uh and but see padding at that frequency oh talk about first of all a waste of energy you're just draining off to heat like a massive amount of that low frequency and turning it into heat which i don't like that um and uh and and it's just um yeah, that's exactly what I don't like about it. It's just a waste. And um I have to suck out gobs of this of this energy. Um but I'm not sure how else we we we're we're working in the passive here. So to boost, you don't you can't boost anything. It's just cutting. So um pass. Okay, so I don't want to put any more so you know, I don't want to put anything else into the crossover. I want to try and keep it simple as possible. So that means I don't want to put a notch or 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 any sort of, you know, different uh you know, things that you can wire into a passive to, uh, to make it better. Um, because ultimately I'm not going to use the passives. So, uh, let's try what I had thought of before, which is putting in some bypass caps on top of the, the, um, oh, by bypassing. Hold on. And I'll, I'll bring you up there. Hold on. Now what I've got here is I've got a pair of, well, you know, for each one, a pair of these, I don't know if you can read, it's kind of hard to read here, but Dooland, Coherent audio, you know, silver foil. Um, these are bypass caps, the 0 0.01 UF. Uh, I'm going to put one here to, to bypass this stack here, which is the tweeter positive, you know, run of the, of the circuit. We're just going to bypass. So I'm going to put one leg on one side of this thing, one leg on the other side of this thing. And, um, and we're going to give her a whirl. What I use in this to make things nice and convenient as I use this Steinle here which is a, um, it's powered by butane. So I can just see if it, there we go. Okay. So now we're cooking. Now I can, yeah, there we go. You can hear it. Okay. See that little red glow. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, but anyway, so now I'll set it over here. Here's the solder. I'll set it right here. Let it warm up. Got my solder. And I'll solder these puppies on. So uh, I'll put one right here. And you don't need to watch me solder it. Um, and then I'm going to do that over here and then on the other side. So hang on. Okay, so now we got the bypass caps in there. And again, um, we're doing this just to play around. Um, the more I play with passive crossovers, the more I can't stand them. Um, it's just there's so many little places and things in there to um, to drive a cuckoo bird like me crazy. In other words, last night, you know, I was working on one, Jono was working on the other. They got done the right, the, the, the same way, although not, you know. I mean, they're done the same way. It's the same circuit, though, you know, I may have had mine situated a little different, the layout situated a little different than John did. And um, so when I look at that and see differences, it tweaks me. I need I, everything to me. It always needs to be symmetrical, perfect, exactly the same on the left as it was on the right, to the nth degree. I mean, to the length of the little wires, to the direction that the inductor is pointing, whether it's on its side or up on its edge, you know, or on, you know, it's like um, all of that stuff needs to be perfectly identically matched um, for me to just be cool in my brain with it. Um, <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's play, let's see if we got anything from, uh, from the bypass. And, and remember also, these things normally need to settle in. You throw in a bypass cap, you need the things to settle in over some time and everything. But let's just see. We should see if we can hear anything right off the cuff. Again, we added bypass caps on the tweeter part of the circuit. Let's see. It's got a super duper smooth high. Um, I can't tell if it was much different from with or without that bypass cap. Um, so let's go to the next song and then we'll see what we're going to do. See if 
Okay, so um, I think it did get better, um, although still not happy with it. Um, it uh, it seems constricted or something. It seems a little bit tight. It seems a little bit subdued. It seems like it's something's bridling it. Something's holding it back. It feels like um, I want it more lively. I want it more lively, more punchy. Um, I want it. Uh, you know, I just want it more lively. So. Hey, gang. Um, I checked out putting it on two channels and what I forgot is um, because the two drivers are different impedances, uh, presenting two loads to the amp gave me a, a varying um, output, right? In for the uh, two drivers, it gave the woofers more because they are a different impedance. So it, 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 it sounded even worse. Um, what we had done by teaming up the two uh, speaker cables together and at the, uh, amp what we did was we basically averaged out the load so they were getting the same amount of, of power to both drivers and so it sounded better by doing that um but it's still not good because it's on the passive and it's a cockamamie way to put to do things <laughs> it's funny because uh until you go active and try the active uh crossover you just you'd never think of it and then once you play around with an active you're like sheesh you know, no way I want to use a passive. So um, anyways, uh, I am going to get this all reworked, get the whole thing all set up different. I, I'm going to go back to active and then we'll set it up and um, we can see the difference that it makes um, because uh, these these big panels are absolutely incredible. So anyways, um, hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something and I'll be back. See you.